when somebody well, hears that, they might not realize how big of an impact that could be, right? When somebody hears what you're saying, it's like, oh, these gut infections, digestion, blah, blah, blah. But we've seen it on paper clinically where you have women that are eating paleo, they're doing grass-fed meats, they're doing a great job with diet, and they're still very low. Some of it could be, like you said, high, you know, the, the excess menstruation. But I'll tell you personally, I've seen a big change in my wife's energy levels after clearing her gut infections out. And we knew that she was having malabsorption. So, and as you age, right? I mean, because when you're 40, 50, 60 and beyond, and you're making less stomach acid due to age, even if you're eating that grass fed steak in that liver capsule, who knows how much you're getting from that. So to me, I think enzymes would be part of a good iron supporting protocol because, you know, people say you are what you eat, but really you are what you digest from what you eat. So I think this would be a good a good point to just bring up enzymes and acids and make sure that if you have like an H pylori infection, that could also be something to address because that could be driving the low iron. Now, is that, is that a safe statement to make? Could H pylori be that big of a smoking gun that it could drive low iron due to the malabsorption? Yeah. I mean, there's always, you know, there's going to be different degrees of how that infection is causing a stress in your body. If it's there, it's chronic, it's creating a lot of inflammation digestive wise enzymes and acids have dropped significantly that may impair your ability to absorb and it, usually there's going to be some symptoms that tell you the severity you know things like just not having good bowel movements having a lot of bloating or gassing or burping and flatulence and, and gut inflammation those are pretty good signs that there's stress going on there um, looking at your stools how formed do they look are you regular are there a lot of undigested stool pieces you know in your stool and those are all pretty good ideas that you're on, that you're on a, a bad track. And so it's good to look at that. And then of course, if you have chronic iron and you're fixing the menstruation issues, you're eating meat, you're adding in digestive support, that's all great. You probably wanna look deeper and get your gut tested and see if there are any other bugs in your gut like SIBO or just general dysbiosis or other parasites or H. pylori or other issues that could be at play. So you gotta look at all of it. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the inflammation. I mean, so that could be gut exposure. That could also be, I would say diet is, is simple. It sounds so simple, but it's still worth mentioning. You still have so many women that are just going in the Starbucks drive through and getting a, a pastry or a bagel or a muffin or whatever, and they have their coffee and that's it. That's it for their breakfast. And then they wonder why they're exhausted. So, I mean, nutrient density yeah. is just so foundational. Yeah, nutrient density is really important. And um, to really have good nutrient density, you have to be eating some level of animal products. You, you're just not going to get the same level of nutrient density from an amino acid standpoint. You're not going to get the iron, the B12. It's going to be harder to get the fat soluble vitamin A. I mean, you'll convert some from B12. I mean, some from uh, beta carotene, but you won't get enough. And if you have insulin resistance, you won't convert B12. Um, you won't convert um, beta carotene well. You also won't convert a lot of your ALA based omega threes like flax and chia, you won't convert that to your longer chain EPA and DHEA fats, which are good for inflammation in your brain. So there's a lot of precursor things that we just assume like, oh, I'm getting iron from spinach. I'm going to convert that non heme iron to heme based iron, right? To animal heme iron. It's like, no, oh, I'm getting enough bioflavonoids in, in my vegetables. That's vitamin A, right? It's like, well, no, that's beta carotene. You may not convert that. Or same thing with, um, just trying to think here what other analogies that you can do. So you have the, the plant-based iron, you have the beta carotene stuff, um, you have the uh, vitamin, trying to think here, what else? Um, zinc and a lot of your minerals may be tied up in a lot of anti-nutrients in plants. So you may think you're getting a lot of these vitamins and minerals, but you may be having a lot of them tied up in the anti-nutrients, the lectins, the phytates, the mineral blockers, the trypsin inhibitors. And so you may think you're getting some of these things because it's on the nutrient label, but there may be some absorption because of these mineral blockers. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Pro proteolytic enzyme blockers. That's a good point.